Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome back to the audio programming tutorial series. Today, we're going to be talking about building a higher level audio interface. And there's a few reasons we're doing this. For one, SDL Audio gives us a lot of power and control over how exactly the computer runs our audio code. And in a lot of ways, that's a good thing. But because we have so much control, it makes simple things like playing an audio file relatively cumbersome to do. Another reason why this is important is because SDL Audio, although it runs on just about every platform in existence, there are still a few platforms it doesn't run on. What happens if we want to run audio on that, those platforms? Or even if we just want to use a different audio API? This way, if we build everything on top of this higher-level audio interface, as little of our code as possible depends on SDL Audio. And if we want to use a different audio interface, like, say, OpenAL, or if we want to run on a different platform, all we'll need to do is implement this audio interface, rather than rewrite our whole audio code. So that's really nice. It's good for portability. So with that, let's go ahead and let's get started. So, the first thing we're going to have in our higher-level audio system is an audio context. And all this is going to be is an interface, the object-oriented kind of interface, that has the basic audio functions. So what this is going to do is have functions like play audio, pause audio, stop audio, things like that. The basic functions you'd think you would do with well, audio. And all of those are going to operate operate on this abstract idea of audio called an audio object. And this is really the base of our whole higher level audio system. Just this context has basic functions, and this odd audio object that's just this abstract notion of what audio is. Now something you might be wondering is why I've made the audio context an interface, the object-oriented kind of interface. And the reason I'm doing this is because of that portability issue I talked about. Although I am going to be implementing this with SDL Audio in this series, what if I want to implement it with OpenAL? What if I want to implement it on a different platform that has a proprietary API for audio? Keeping it as a programming interface, or object-oriented kind of interface solves that sort of problem. It makes it very easy to have multiple implementations of the same concept. So, how does this audio object work? How is this representing audio? And the big thing this has is this generate samples function that takes in a stream of audio and some length. And this is really the big function that bridges the gap between our higher level audio context way of dealing with audio and SDL's lower level buffers, streams, and samples way of dealing with audio. So that's what this function's for. This just bridges the gap. So we can talk about audio with play audio, pause audio, various functions like that, and we can use this generate samples function to actually, you know, get the audio we're supposed to be playing, or pausing, or stopping, or what have you. So that's what this is all about. We're also going to have this set position function, so that, you know, what if we don't want to play this audio perfectly in sequence? What if we want to, you know, go back to the start, for instance, if we stop the audio? That's what that's for. And those are really the two functions of the audio object. You can... the two big functions. There's a few more we'll talk about later, but the big ones are it can generate samples so we can actually play the audio, and you can change the position of the audio so we can, you know, go to some different location in the audio. But how do we represent this audio object? What data does this have? And it's going to have some audio data, first off. This is just some... you can think of this as the lowest level representation of audio data, something like a WAV file, or an MP3 file, or maybe an oscillator like a sine wave that generates audio. Just some base representation of audio, somewhere, somehow, some way. This is, you can think of this like that 
digital audio thing we talked about in the last video, where it's just a big array of samples. It's like that. It's the representation of audio. Somehow. And that's why it's an interface, because we don't really care exactly how it's representing the audio, as long as it represents it in some way, and, you know, deals has a few functions we have so that we can use it with this audio object system. So it has some data representing the, the lower level audio data, and the audio object's also going to have a sample info. And there's just some various properties about how this audio object works, for instance. Like, for example, what's the volume of this? Are we playing this really loud or really quietly? What's the pitch of this? Are we playing at a higher pitch for some reason? Maybe we want everyone to sound like a chipmunk? What if, what if we're looping the audio for some reason? Like, there's an, a music file, we want to just have it loop in the background. If so, where do we loop? And maybe panning. Maybe we want this to sort of pan left and right throughout the speakers to give spatial effects <laughs> or something. Yeah, I don't know, various things like that. Just things that are small alterations to how we play the audio. They don't necessarily warrant changing the audio data itself, but they're just small modifications to how we play the audio. And yes, yeah, so it's just etc. Various things like that in sample info. But the audio data. I mentioned that there was some way that this thing is going to... some common way this is going to generate... well, that this is going to allow itself to be used by audio objects. That's what I'm trying to say here. And what this is really going to do is just have a lower level generate samples function. One that takes in the stream, the length, and some position to start playing at, and some sample info, so that, well, represents various alterations to how it should be played. And that's really all the audio data is going to have. Again, it doesn't really matter how this audio data is represented. It could be a WAV file, it could be an MP3 file, it could be some oscillator, it could be something else. It doesn't matter, as long as it can ultimately produce the samples that SDL Audio or whatever lower-level API wants. And this is really the structure of our higher-level audio system. Again, we'll talk more about the finer details of this in a moment. Really, I just want to give you an introduction so you have an idea of what we're supposed to be working with. But there's one more question. How do we generate this audio data? How do we get an iAudio data? I mean, we can't just directly create it because there's... Well, I suppose we could if it's something like an oscillator, but what if we're loading from a file, for instance? That we, you could have various MP3 generators and such, but to make things a little bit easier, I'm going to have an iAudio device. And this is pretty much just the factory pattern, if you've ever heard of that design pattern. It has a function to create audio of a certain file name, and it'll, if it's an MP3 file, it'll create an MP3 audio data system thing. If it's WAV, it'll create a WAV audio data thing. If it's FLAC, it'll create a FLAC audio data thing. <laughs> you know, things like that. And also a function to release it, so that when we're done with it, we can do whatever specific releasing we need to do for that particular piece of audio. And this is the complete audio interface. Again, I do, like, I, like I was saying, I don't expect you to fully grasp this big picture just yet. I don't expect you to have an in intimate understanding of how this higher level audio thing works. Big thing I'm trying to do is introduce you, give you an idea of what this higher level audio interface is, how it's going to work, and how it's going to link this higher level notion of play audio, pause audio, and stop audio with the lower level notion of generate samples every time the audio device asks for them. And hopefully you have a general idea of how that works. You might not have, you might be fuzzy on some of the finer details, but hopefully you have a general idea of that. But how do we implement this? How do we fill in all those finer details and get a higher level audio interface? Find out next time on the audio programming tutorial series. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned, and I'll see you next time.